Hello, friends, and welcome to the Friends in Fiction show behind the book with four New York Times bestselling authors and endless stories. I'm Mary Kay Andrews. And I'm Ron Block. On behalf of Mary Kay's co-founders and co-hosts, Kristen Harmel, Christy Woodson Harvey, and Patty Callahan Henry, we're excited to welcome you to a special episode of Friends in Fiction Behind the Book, a quicker, deep dive into the life and work of one of our favorite authors. Today, we're thrilled to welcome my good friend, Leanne Dolan. Leanne is the author of five novels, including Lost and Found in Paris, The Sweeney Sisters, which is how <laughs> our star-crossed meeting occurred. <laughs> Helen of Pasadena and Elizabeth, the first wife. Leanne's written for TV and, and radio and been a regular columnist for O Magazine, Pasadena Magazine, and Working Mother. She's the producer and host of Satellite Sisters, the award-winning winning syndicated wow. radio show and top-rated podcast she created with her four real-life sisters. She's appeared on the Oprah Winfrey Show, CBS Sunday Morning, and the Today Show, and has been a featured speaker at the LA Times Festival of Books and dozens of other libraries at other events at libraries, bookstores, schools, and women's organizations across the country. Her newest novel, The Marriage Sabbatical, is just out and is certainly turning heads. Publishers Weekly hails it, saying Dolan elevates her diverting story with plenty of sharp insights about middle age. Okay. Welcome, <laughs> <Thank you>. Leanne. <laughs> There's something about sh sharp and middle age. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what's happening. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here with the two of you. Thank we you for are, having me. We are so excited too. Okay, but let's start out with you giving us the elevator pitch. We're going to put you on the spot. What's oh, your new okay. book, The Marriage Sabbatical, about? All and right. Also, well, yeah. Also, okay. In true friends and fiction style, what's it really about? <laughs> Uh, okay, so on the surface, this is a book about a Gen X couple who, after 23 years of marriage, uh, they have the opportunity to spend a year away from their jobs. And uh, he wants to go on an adventure trip to Patagonia. And at the last minute, the wife's like, mm, I don't think I want to do that. I want to go to Santa Fe and learn jewelry making. So they decide mutually to take a vacation from their marriage. All bets are off. Do whatever you want see you uh, in nine months. Right. And that's the marriage sabbatical in, in, a, in you know, as in terms of what the publisher thinks it's about. I think it's <laughs> actually a story about marriage, <laughs> much less about yeah. sex and more about marriage. Uh, a story about a couple that's basically done all the right things. You know, they, they got married young, they had their kids, they saved and bought a house, they've worked hard. And 25 years in, they're kind of like, what happens? Like, wow, here we are 25 years later. Uh, they both feel like they have some individual dreams still left to pursue, things they left on the table in their 20s. And so they decide to take this break because they look around and they see like, oh, other people are their definition of marriage seems slightly different than ours. So so that's to me what it's really about is a long-term marriage and sort of the push and pull of that. Tell us about the origin of this book, Leanne. And what was that little spark when you thought, yes, this is my next book idea? I know in your uh, acknowledgments, you talked a little bit about um what a middle of the night email to your editor? Yeah, <laughs> for the title, for the title, right. for sure, right. you know, conceptually. But marriage has fascinated me for a long time because when you really think about it, it's just kooky. Like, what are we doing? Like, we're just two people in their 20s who have no idea what life ahead is going to hold, deciding let's spend the rest of it together. It's such an act of faith. And, um, and I feel like the longer I was married, I am married 31 years. The more I think that, that boy, like, I am glad I married the right guy. You know, <laughs> if you were married to the wrong person, marriage must be terrible. So, um, but it was actually a conversation. So it's kind of fishing around for stories about a good marriage, because there are a lot of stories about bad marriages. Those are easy yeah. to write, right? There's so much conflict, tension, divorce, you're fighting. Oh, it's great. It's great to write about that. Um, but a good marriage is just sort of boring to write about. Um, and then a friend of mine said, I was catching up with her and I asked her like, hey, how are the kids? How's work? How's life? You know, how's your spouse? And she said, you know, I like being married, but I wish I could date occasionally. And I, <laughs> the, minute, the minute she said that, Mary Kay, I was like, that's the book. Like, because it wasn't, it wasn't super salacious. It was just like, I'm sort of looking for something that's, 
not here in the day to day. And I thought that there was uh there was a story there. So then I started looking into sort of some of the darker sides of, I don't know, swinging and open marriages. And I started doing all kinds of reading and looking around. And once you tell people you're writing a book about marriage, people tell you things, you know, so <laughs> stuff you didn't even want to know. I am I am the holder of some secrets that uh I'm sorry I know. That is absolutely that's absolutely true. But I I really thought like oh, I don't want it to be I just they just need a little break from their marriage, their relationships, their day-to-day responsibilities. More like a sabbatical than, you know, an open marriage and then that's why I was like oh, the marriage sabbatical. And that's when I emailed my editor right away. I had no story, no plot. I was like, what do you think about this title? And it was in the middle of the pandemic and, you know, where everyone was really cooped up with the people they loved, uh, most of all. <laughs> and, and she's like, I need a sabbatical right now. So it was, it was, a uh, it was full approval, even on the title from the minute I concocted it. When it's right, it's right. Yeah, it, right. true, right. true. It comes out of nowhere sometimes. Yeah. So let's talk about characters. This is such a character-driven um, novel. And um, the one thing you didn't mention yet, but I want to bring it up, is that we read in your author's note that the book was not based on your own experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Hey, I think I owe it to my spouse to say that. You like the old caveat of write about what you know. I don't know anything about that. You know, we've been married 31 years. We run errands on Saturday and then we watch British murder mysteries. Like that's our idea of a really great marriage. Um, so, uh, but but Nicole, the, but I did really... Ron want to write about Gen X characters, which is mm -hmm. my generation, because a lot of times in the book publishing business, there's sort of a sweet spot for women's ages. And that's in the 30s, you know, 20s, 30s. And I've had the opportunity to write older, you know, characters that are older, 65 plus, which I love doing. But I really wanted to write about Gen X characters this time because it's my generation and I hadn't really had the opportunity. That's great. Now, are there pieces of your own life and your personality that you put into the book, though? Um, of course, you know, always. Uh, the The book starts off, the couple is from Portland, Oregon. And, you know, because Portland's the kind of place where they go for something like this, you know, <laughs> you might not, you might not be able to try this in, I don't know, other cities. But um, but I lived in Portland in my 20s. And I have a very soft spot for, uh, you know, that time in my life. And that city at that time, it was before Portland became hip and cool. It was still like a, you know, a, a former timber town trying to turn itself around. They, they certainly had a cultural and a business renaissance ever since then. And so this couple meets right then, like, you know, in sort of a down and out section of the city, they share a love of music, which is something I went to a million concerts when I was living in Portland in my twenties. And, um, and, uh, and so that I loved, I loved tapping back into that again, like that's their, their starting point for their relationship. And, and that holds us, uh, you know, just a special spot in my heart. Yeah. And you have characters of various ages and personalities and things. Are, is there any one of them that you most relate to? Um, let's see. Uh I like she Nicole is the the wife, the main character, and um she meets a really um when she moves to Santa Fe and she they do this sabbatical and uh, she embarks on what she thinks is going to be this, you know, glorious path. Um, she meets a former actress, Chloe Jones, and uh, who really um, kind of represents sort of the wild, you know, life that Nicole did not have. Nicole followed all the rules, paid back her student loans, you know. <laughs> <laughs> went to work in retail every day. Um, but Chloe represents something really different. I don't think I'm Chloe, but I would like to be. But that gotcha. character very much was based on Ally McGraw. Because when I was doing my research in Santa Fe, we ran into Ally McGraw in a coffee wow. shop. <laughs> nice. It was the greatest sighting of my life. I mean, <laughs> Allie at 82 is glorious. She's a glorious person. And she was full Allie with the braid and the linens and the statement jewelry. And we had the same toenail colors, Ron. And that's when I knew like, <laughs> I could be Allie. <laughs> I just need to step it up a bit. Uh, but I like this idea of an older woman sort of sharing her wisdom and perspective with the younger woman. I, I think 
uh, that multi-generational relationship is really cool. And I, yeah. I hope someday to be that older woman for some younger woman. <laughs> She's a great character. I love Thank her. you. Love I her. know. I, 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 it's like, uh, I finished it at the wee hours of this morning and I was like, you cannot go down the rabbit hole looking for the <laughs> house beautiful and, um, uh, the other magazine spreads, of Ali McGraw's house because you will never research. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's the coolest, right? And yeah. just, I, I don't know if you spent any time in Santa Fe, Mary Kay, but it, I it, it, it does have your name all over it because it is some of the best shopping I have ever <laughs> seen. And I'm not really a shopper, but like the stores there just have beautiful handcrafted items for houses and fabrics and textures. It's, it's extraordinary. So beyond the great architecture, you could do some damage in Santa Fe. Yeah, but yeah, I'm even just- You're not dripping with silver jewelry today. I, know, I have a touch of silver <laughs> on i know okay. i i do have a couple of pieces okay i don't want to cross the line into costuming so i'm <laughs> open <laughs> I mean, i'm i'm open i'm open to your critique on this my look i'm open to it i haven't i haven't started on the book tour yet so but i do have a couple of good pieces that i'm working in but i <laughs> I just, I didn't want to look like, like poor man's Ali McGraw. That's sad. That's a sad look. I have this vision no, no. of you at the end of your tour, just covered in all of this. Bargain basement Ali is not what anybody wants to see. This layers of silver. That would be funny. Like I can't even, you can barely see my head after cashmere scarf wrapped all the way around yeah. oh i have that oh i bought one of those there okay. <laughs> oh that's coming out next week yeah, okay, that's coming out all right so that kind of segues us into the setting from mm. san francisco to argentina to santa fe um tell us what your research for those places how they how you brought that to life especially in terms of shopping <laughs> um so you know i hadn't uh i hadn't been to santa fe in years like 30 years i had went a couple times when i was in college because i i have an older brother and he lived there at one point so my mother just sent me there for thanksgivings because we i didn't live anywhere i went to college in california so but i remembered it just so romantically it's such a spiritual place a beautiful place um so i did what i usually do like when i can't quite afford to go there right away i start following a lot of instagram accounts and you know there's an amazing amount of material you can get on uh, uh on the internet about any city but then we did my husband and i did go so we actually like booked a week in santa fe the book the casita that's in the house is absolutely the one we rented mm -hmm. it was I right ask you about that yeah yeah it's a real house you can rent it i'll send you the link yeah <laughs> <laughs> we might get that place booked up for a whole year. You might have, I to have mean, a commission. It, it was uh it was unbelievable. And I just I was just like, I'm just putting this right in the book. Um so that one, I did some hands-on research. I had to. Now, the husband goes off to Patagonia, so Argentina and Chile. He takes this motorcycle trip. Um, I can't tell you how unappealing any of that is to me. Like, <laughs> motorcycle travel, no. Patagonia remote places, windy, like, and ironically, my sisters, Julie and Liz did a hiking trip in Patagonia, like three years ago. And when they came back and they mm. told everybody about it on the show, I was like, that sounds terrible. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and they loved it. So when I was trying to concoct a place where he could go, that one is remote, that was kind of key to the plot, very little communication, you know, that was key to the plot. Also just kind of like a kind of a guy's thing that he would do, Patagonia, that it came back to me. So I had to watch a lot of YouTube videos. I followed a lot of, you know, various uh, Instagram accounts of tour companies that do this with the motorcycles. Um, Ewan McGregor, McGregor has that show where he drives motorcycles all over Russia. I watched that. So I tried to get into that for that space. And then San Francisco, again, just a city I love. So uh, happy, happy to always drop San Francisco into a book. You know, I was fascinated with Nicole's silversmithing journey. Tell us about that. Well, so she's a woman that is, was an art student, sort of artistic, uh, but then went into retail, took a very pragmatic approach to her career and became a merchandiser for what is a 
you know, Nordstrom. barely covered Nordstrom, uh, but uh, it's Needham's in the book. And um, but she she always felt like she wanted to go back to that creative side of her. Now, retail's, of course, been, you know, trash tanked in the in the economy and the pandemic. So she just thinks this is her chance. So um, so I, you know, I started by thinking like, OK, I know Santa Fe is a great jewelry sp space. What can I do? So I actually went to the course listings at the Santa Fe Community College online and was like, oh, they have like a silversmithing program. That <laughs> would be cool. Like if she did that. So that's how I worked that into the plot. And then again, I had to watch a lot of YouTube videos about <laughs> silversmithing and I had no knowledge of silversmithing. Uh, and then um, when I was in Santa Fe, I spoke to a couple of silversmiths there and they gave me a tour of their, of their retail spaces and told me a little bit about the business and things like that. And now as a result, Mary Kay, I follow a lot of silversmiths on Instagram as well. So, you know, it all comes back to shopping, basically. Um, okay, but I have one more question for yeah. you. I loved that Nicole's secret superpower was managing to find the best seat at the bar. <laughs> because Thank that you. spoke to me. Oh, okay. I love to sit at the bar, especially when I'm on book tour, if I'm alone. Does Now, do you have that superpower? I, I love sitting at a bar too. So, and I have no, I think it's a sign of confidence too, particularly when you're a single woman that you can just go in and find a sp spot at the bar. It can be harder than it sounds. Uh, so yeah, I love eating in bars and sitting in bars. You hear, uh, you know, you get great dialogue in bars. I'm sure you steal from people you've uh, heard course. from. <laughs> and, um, and that is a real restaurant there in Santa Fe and that's a real bar. So I just thought that was all fun. And uh, I'm pro, long. yeah, I'm pro eating in the bar. So that's, <laughs> so let's start a movement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I like about eating at the bar is first of all, you get your food faster. Yeah. <laughs> and you get your drinks faster. Yeah. <laughs> And you can <laughs> chat up the bar. If no one else will talk to you, usually the bartender will talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need to say much. You sort of lean in. Yeah. I think it's a friendly, most bars are friendly places. Yeah. So um, as if you need more of a reason than food faster and drink faster. I don't know, but sure you could talk. <laughs> so. I see a book in this, like the best bars <laughs> stools to sit on. It's true. That would be a good book. Get on it, Ron. Get on, right, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I like to do it too. And I actually have met uh, Mary Kay at a few bars and we've sat on stools together. We've had a good time. Um, so uh, let's let's talk a little bit about your process. So I love how you said the idea came to you and, and mm -hmm. you only had the title and nothing else. But once you decided kind of, and started going down the path, did you kind of work it all out first or did you kind of see where the, uh, did you take a see what happens approach? No, I'm a worker outer. So, and I also sold this on a pitch. You know, I put this, I had to like build a, a 10 page document and outline for the publisher. Um, so this was a part of a two book deal. So, you know, that sort of forced me to sit down. And when you have to write like a 10 page pitch document, that's a beginning, a middle and an end. Honestly, <laughs> that's like a whole, that's a whole book. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I always start, like I had the idea and I knew where they were headed. I had the timeline, essentially a calendar year, this nine months that they had while their kids were off studying abroad. So that helped me shape the story. But then you need, as you know, as you kindly said, it is really character driven. So then you need to figure out who's Nicole and who's Jason. And Jason is the husband. And I literally just figured out the year they might be born, looked up the most popular names that year and plunked them in. Like I really wanted it to be sort of representative of all the Nicoles and Jasons out there <laughs> in Gen X. And there are many. But then what are their individual stories and and then I I mapped it out. Now, I will admit, like halfway through the writing process, I was like, oh, I need to speed this up. So I did a few like the the back end of the book changed a little bit. So I wasn't going so much month by month anymore. Um, but that's something, you know, that comes to you. Also, like the addition of the Chloe Jones character. Uh, <laughs> I was halfway through the book when I went to Santa Fe and saw Ali McGraw and I like wrote her into the book. I'm like, Oh, she's going in the book. So I put her in. Um, but, uh, but it was just a, you know, a slow and steady built, but I, I had essentially the outline of the story when I started. Nice. Um, you know, one thing I really liked about the marriage sabbatical was that you allowed Nicole and Jason 
to be fallible. In mm -hmm. other words, not everything about their experiment turned out to be a success. Right. <laughs> um, but overall, there is so much about marriage and relationships in this novel. And not just husband and wife relationships, but friendships, because you wrote about that in some some depth. What did you take away from the writing of this book? Oh, oh okay. These oh, you want to get deep now. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, we do. Oh shoot. <laughs> um, let's say nothing. I I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I will you got I will silver jewelry yeah I will say this I spent a lot of time on the first hundred pages of this book more time than I normally do mm -hmm. because I did want the readers to understand where Nicole and Jason were coming from it would be really easy just to sort of dismiss them as like oh people who didn't you know observe their marriage vows so end of story you know I'm I'm gonna close the book but I wanted readers to understand that like they're just they they're just normal people. They had good years and bad. You know, they had good decades and bad, which is really what happens in a long term marriage. And, you know, for the most part, they've been doing the right thing. And I think through that, it really made me look at, you know, my own marriage and really take a look at, well, we're 31 years in now. Uh, I don't even remember our 40s. Like I just there's certain decades where I was like, we just with the kids and the work and then how do we even get through that decade? And I don't remember really speaking from like 1998 to 19, you know, 2005, like when you're just a busy working couple. So I have to say it really made me look at the arc of my relationship with my husband and, you know, some of the, some of the stuff that was my fault, some of the stuff that was his fault, uh, that can be hard to revisit. And, but, uh, but it was critical to sort of get into the mind of these two people who had reached a point where they might do something that was a little bit off track, a little bit wild for them. Um, and then I had a friend, a good friend of mine, who's a marriage and family counselor, read the first hundred pages and give me some notes like, are my on track? Because, you know, it's hard to write a character people don't like. I, Mary, I have a hard time with that, Mary Kay. I don't know if you do. I do, do too. I do too. But, yeah. Uh, and she said, oh, the husband's kind of a jerk. I'm like, oh, well, then I have to rework this. I don't want the husband to be a jerk. Like, right. and I don't think he was, it, it, but that was a really key note for me. Like I needed to make sure that both points of view in the marriage were represented, which of course made me think, well, maybe my husband was right some of those times in the past. <laughs> Damn it, I hate it when that happens. There you go. <laughs> I don't like oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That spat we had in 2003 is all coming back to me now. So, <laughs> so I have to say it did really, and I read a lot of books around marriage mm -hmm. at the time, so it really made me think pretty deeply about my own, uh, my own relationship, my own marriage. It's crazy. What I, oh, what sorry, I really want, I, I can't resist. What I really want to know is if you came up with a top five list. Oh, uh. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> he hasn't read the book yet. Oh, oh that's yeah. what he, I was just going to ask what he was thinking about. Yeah. That. He hasn't read the book yet. So I, I think when he reads it, I, we might be doing that for our next anniversary. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know behind the scenes. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah. Why not? I think we have to let the people watching um, figure that out for themselves. But I, yeah. really, like, I really liked that element of the book. Well, I you know too. what? I had to wrestle with the fact uh, intimacy is a part of marriage. And like there has to be I had to figure out how do I, Leon Dolan, as like, you know, someone who never talks about sex, uh, write about this in a way that's convincing because that is kind of what se that is what separates marriage from a deep friendship or a sibling right. relationship. Like you have to deal with it in some way in your own marriage, in my own writing. And I thought right. that that was a fun way to do it. It really was. It was very fun. And uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, somebody else might do it and take it down a whole different path than you did. But there was so much of the goodness and the real the realness of of the of a marriage in there. Thank you. I appreciate I really appreciate that because I worked really hard on that. It's true. Okay, can you give us any sneak peeks into what you're working on next? And why is it more stories about the settings and people of Santa Fe? <laughs> it's not people of Santa oh. Fe, but it's people of another sexy setting that I feel like is really in the headlines these days. Um, and again, I pitched this book several uh, years ago, but it's a book called The Wedding. So I thought it would be an interesting pairing. Um, so it's about, it's about, it's the story of a wedding, but it's told from the point of view of, the mother of the bride and the mother of the groom. 
and they mm -hmm. are very different people. So you do meet the couple and everything, but it's really this, that weird face off that happens sometimes between the mob and the mog. And, um, and in this case, the women are very different. Uh, the mother of the groom is a, a super, uh, you know, super Yankee woman from um, Connecticut uh, and that, which is where I grew up. And um, they're sort of watching their family um, fortune drain and wane. <laughs> Wayne away and they're just trying to hold on to some of the vestiges of what they used to have and the mother of the bride is a single mother by choice and she lives in montecito california oh. uh so um mm. because that is just a super fun fancy place that again i've wanted to write about for years and all of a sudden a certain royal couple moves there and um now it's in the news every day and it's a brand and everything but it's been really fun to write about those two very different lives and those two really different settings. So that book, the voices go back and forth between the mother of the bride, the mother of the groom, and you, you see this wedding unfold uh, from both their points of view. That's a great idea. And I, it's actually reminiscent. We, we got a taste of it in the marriage sabbatical with the, with Nicole's mom and um, Jason's mom and how right. different they yes. were. Yes. Yes. Very different. Yeah. So we they wanted had very, to know more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, maybe some fan fiction on that. Then I'll do some okay. anonymous fan fiction about those yeah. two moms. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't need another excuse to go back to Santa Fe. So maybe okay. who knows? Let's, you know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe there will be a, a sequel or something. <laughs> I'd like to go back there and write it off. Yeah, there you <laughs> well, go. Speaking, there you go. <laughs> speaking of going back, I know you're embarking on a book tour next week as the marriage sabbatical lands in bookstores everywhere. Tell our audience, please, where they can meet up with you in person and out on the road. And also let's mention that you and I have an event together in Spring Lake, New Jersey, May 18th, right? This is amazing. Uh, this is breaking news for me. I cannot wait. I am I'm in, excited. I am interviewing you, which will be fantastic oh, uh, for at a, in Spring Lake, New Jersey, which I believe is where Bruce Springsteen is from. Correct. That is well, his hometown, isn't it? Well, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that's, and the name of the bookstore is Thunder Road Books. So I, it's got to be boss related. So that in itself is of a thrill. But I start um, doing a lot in California, uh, in Pasadena, in Orange County, in Oakland. I'll be there in early May. I'm going to Dallas. Uh, and my sister lives there and Fort Worth. I've never done an event in Fort Worth. So that's nice. exciting. Um, and then I'm going to um, be in Portland, Oregon, which is great. I, this is fun. I'm going back where I spent my twenties, worked at Nike, you know, I'm at the pals down there. And, uh, I actually just rented an Airbnb a block away from my old apartment when I was in my twenties. Wow. <laughs> it's like, I'm just going, just driving the truck right down memory lane here. Yeah. <laughs> so, Go for it. so I'm excited for my little Airbnb, uh, in Portland, Oregon. And then I will be in Santa Fe at the end of June. So that kind of wraps it, but, um, it is, it's a lot of travel, but I'm looking forward to it. Fun. Sounds fun. I can't wait to see all the silver. <laughs> <laughs> so where can our audience find you online so they can keep in touch and um, keep up to date on any, you know, tour stops that uh, get added? Thanks. I'm, I'm always at Leanne Dolan uh, on Instagram and on Twitter and on threads. Uh, and then leandolan.com is my website. And then of course I do Satellite Sisters. So you can also find me at Sat Sisters and, and the podcast, we're going to be doing a whole special series of interviews uh, about Santa Fe um, and about uh, the marriage sabbatical for the month of April. Awesome. Uh, doing some interesting interviews there. So yeah, but at Leanne Dolan or at Sat Sisters, one great places. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you so much, Leanne, for being such a wonderful guest today. Yeah. So many other things I want to ask you about. We well, we're going to chat in New Jersey. See you in NJ. Chat. We're going to be That's at right. the bar, <laughs> sitting at the bar with the bartender. Meg will be with us. <laughs> Meg and I love to sit at the bar together. Um, well, let's get a corner. Let's yeah. get a corner so we can fit three. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. You've been a great guest. Everybody Thank you. And grab your copies of the marriage sabbatical. And one place you can do that is our friends in fiction shop on bookshop.org mm -hmm. for your purchases, support our show and our beloved indie bookstores nationwide. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.
And thanks to all of you out there. Don't forget to tune in every Wednesday night here on Facebook or YouTube for brand new longer form content about the books, authors, and the reading and writing worlds. You can find everything about the Friends and Fiction universe from the live show to the podcast, the newsletter, and in-person events, and also information about how to purchase our guest books to updates from the Friends and Fiction official book club. Whew, that's a lot. All on our website, friendsandfiction.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.